Hi, I'm Katie Simmons, Managing Associate at Wombleborn Dickinson. And I'm Rebecca Hewting, a barrister at Four Pump Court. And in celebration of Business Women's Day, Wombleborn Dickinson, Four Pump Court and the Society for Computers of Law have teamed up to introduce you to a group of inspiring women working in law and tech. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll be speaking with women from across the law and tech world who have carved out their careers covering the private practice, in-house, public sector, and the judiciary. These exceptional women will share their stories, advice, and explore challenges in these bite-sized videos. We do hope you enjoy watching these videos as much as Katie and I enjoy chatting with the speakers. And on that note, we hope you'll also join us on the 22nd of September, which is International Women's Day, when we will speak with triple Olympian Fran Housel on the topic of big goal setting, challenge, and ambition. Today I'm going to be speaking with Anne Cagliano, Legal Counsel, and Cameron Stoll, Senior Privacy Director at Blackboard. So Anne, what was your dream job as a child? Um, my dream job as a child, I think that I wanted to probably be uh, a number of things depending on the stage of, of life, but um, interestingly, uh, somewhat recently, I was at home in my family's house and going through um, some school papers from elementary school and found this craft sort of cut out flower that um, told about us um, in, I, I think it was around age eight, and I had written that I wanted to be a lawyer and I am a lawyer now, um, but I hadn't remembered that and I was, I was so surprised because I um, I, I came to the law probably 10 years later than my, than my peers. I, I, I studied 10 years after, after undergrad and um, sort of came to it through a circuitous route. And I'm so glad I did. And then looking back, I, I, it was fun to have a little artifact of, of the desire to, to do what I'm doing. So I'll say lawyer. And Cameron, the same question to you. What was your dream job as a child? Contrary to Anne's story, I did not want to be a lawyer. And actually, I didn't know any lawyers before I went to law school. When I was little, I was obsessed with Jurassic Park. So I wanted to be a paleontologist. Um, and when I got to college, I did my first dig. It was an archaeological dig in the South. And it was about 110 degrees every day. And it turns out I'm not really suited to spend my career uh, in the heat and the dirt. So um, I was so bad at it that summer that they gave me an indoor activity. And the only indoor activity was, uh, was called GIS. And it was a, a method of sort of computerized geospatial data. So I was building um, digital maps of the dig instead. So it was my very first experience working in technology. When I went back to college, I switched my minor from paleontology to GIS. So it was, it was really my first experience in tech that came out of a failed childhood dream. I still like dinosaurs very much though. Um, what is your favorite example of technology doing good? Anne and I both work at Blackbaud, which is a uh, cloud solutions company for social good organizations. So we get to see a lot of technology doing good every single day, um, which makes us incredibly lucky. I would say uh, my favorite example in recent history is Just Giving's Captain Tom Page. Just Giving is a subsidiary of Blackbaud, um, with which many of you are probably familiar. And hopefully everyone knows the story of Captain Tom, who raised almost 33 million pounds last year um, for NHS charities together to um, celebrate his 100th birthday. He walked 100 laps of his garden. Uh, 1.5 million people donated to his Just Giving page. We call that a blockbuster fundraising page. Um, so that was a really heartening example of what technology can do um, at a time where people really needed to, to feel like they were doing something and to feel like they were um, contributing and, and coming together as a community at a time where we were all 
stuck in our flats uh, separately. So that was a really nice example. That's a great example. Um, apart from the fact that I think it's really neat that my my watch will call the ambulance if I fall and lose consciousness. I think that's a neat use of, of tech, although my my privacy law colleague will probably um, say that that it's a concern about uh, uh, my watch having information about me, um, which which may be true. But um, as Cameron said, Blackbaud um, is 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 about empowering social good. And I think probably the, the best example that I have um, came from serving on an employee at Blackbaud of, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, of a, a committee of um, employees um, serving on the Employee Giving, giving Foundation um, in, in determining sort of where employee gifts were going to which, to which, um, to which customers who had who had solicited solicited grants, and we had the chance to go out into the, the community and see um, what our what our customers were were doing on a day to day basis, and it was the most inspiring thing. One, just learning about people from all walks of life who are focused on things like um, special needs schools or um, reading during the summer to kids who don't have anyone um, to read with or getting books in children's hands and um, uh, and there is such a, a we could we could have a whole webinar about about all of the different missions that our customers have but um, it was truly inspiring to see that that um, in some cases the source of funding um, was was the donations that they were able to raise through our solutions. And so I found that especially inspiring. What is your favorite element of your job? My favorite element of my job is probably working with non-lawyers. No offense to lawyers, but um, I, I really enjoy working with people whose brains work differently than mine. And most of the time when I was in private practice, I was working with other attorneys. It's really nice now to be in-house and be able to work with engineers or product managers or marketing team. Um, and just to see how people approach problems differently, to get to sit down with them and understand the ins and outs of our products and our services um, and, and be able to talk and, and exist with people who come from other industries and, and aren't nerdy lawyers like me and Anne. I think the favorite, my, my favorite element of, of, of my job is learning. Um, as, a, as a lawyer, you're, you're never at the end of, of learning new things. The law is always changing. Technology is always changing. Companies um, evolve over time. Um, regulations, laws change. And um, it's exciting to feel like you're always just expanding your knowledge. You're always growing uh, professionally, um, it, which is which is also a form of, of personal growth. And so, um, while it feels daunting at times, I I, I have definitely felt like um, I need to know everything, and 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 that's not not realistic. Or you you see others around you who. Um, are further along than you. It is definitely exciting to um, to be curious about your field and have that curiosity really satisfied um, every day as you work on new matters, take on new projects, and and answer the the call of of the company that you work for. Have you ever felt like an outsider in your career? And if so, what do you think caused this, and how did you overcome this challenge? Early in my career in private practice, I worked with clients who um, were used to working with attorneys who were men of a certain age. I think the adage was something like, you want a young doctor and an old lawyer. So they had a hard time taking advice, I think, from a young woman. Um, one client only referred to me as my boss's assistant rather than his associate. It took years of hard work um, for them to get used to calling on me directly for advice. It was never a hostile work environment, but I certainly felt like an outsider um, because I was a young woman at the time. 
it was a good experience of learning how to deal with um, more difficult clients for sure. But after that, I sought out work environments with a more balanced uh, gender split for sure. Um, and so I, I was delighted to find a job at Blackboard where I think currently we have seven women and three men in the law department. Um, it, uh, it makes me feel like I belong a lot more. Um, feeling like an outsider in my career. Yes, I have um, felt like an outsider before. I think it, it has had a lot to do with what I was explaining before, ironically, about my favorite part of the job um, of learning and, and um, being curious and finding out new things. I think the other side of the coin, as I mentioned, is feeling like you're responsible for knowing everything or you're responsible for um, knowing at least as much as your colleagues know. And, and that's just a, a recipe, I think, for disappointment. We've all um, had our, our own journeys and, and come to the, the places where we are and learned, um, learned lessons um, from those. And um, just a comparison to others is, is, is never, never a good idea. Um, I, I will say that um, in talking about this with some of my female colleagues, um, they talked to me and I had not heard the term before, but they talked about um, imposter syndrome and the idea that um, women sometimes in a professional um, setting can feel like they're sort of, you know, faking it and, until they make it. And it helped me to realize that certainly I was not the, the only one um, who was feeling that way. And also realizing that the reality is, you know, we are all um, in, in a sense, just making it and doing our best um, to, get, um, to get our jobs done. So I, I think just a little bit of um, kind of a, a realistic perspective about what, what everyone else um, deals with helped me get over it and um, gain a little bit more confidence about what I'm able to bring to the table professionally. Working in-house, it's not uncommon to be the only lawyer in the room. Um, I think the average is that um, there's 0.3 percent of lawyers to total company employees. So you're going to have one attorney to a few hundred employees in general. And so it's hard to feel like you belong necessarily when you're dealing with teams of engineers, you're the only attorney in the room. Um, I found the best way to stop being an outsider is really to ask to be an insider. And what I mean by that is, you know, ask to join the meetings, ask to join the happy hours of other teams. Um, if you demonstrate your interest in their work and um, what other teams are doing, they're usually going to greet you with open arms. So I always suggest bonding over common interests um, while you grow these relationships with other teams. And in no time, you might be considered an honorary member of some of these other departments and feel a lot less like an outsider. Um, everyone has preconceived notions of what lawyers are like. Uh, so go out and prove them wrong and treat them with respect. Um, pay attention to their work and show interest in it. And, and usually you'll get that respect right back. Anne Cameron, thank you both so much for your time and advice today. I really appreciate it.